Welcome back to Quantum Conversations. My name is Sarah, and today my co-host Carrie Bennett and I are going to be making these complex topics of quantum biology and circadian biology understandable to the everyday person. Thank you so much for tuning in. We ask that if you are listening on audio only, that you take a moment to leave us up to a five-star review. And if you're on YouTube, leave us a like, leave us a comment. It will help to get the show out to more people. And before we jump into today's topic, just a quick reminder to head down to the show notes and check out my free resources as well as Carrie's free resources. We also do have courses on a variety of topics. If you are hoping to dive deeper, Carrie and I both have have practitioner courses available as well for anyone who wants to begin to bring these topics to their clients and help them to implement these strategies into their daily lives. So check those out. We also have a co-taught course called Quantum Fertility that is available that allows people and practitioners to work on their fertility using these principles of quantum biology and circadian biology. Again, thank you so much for listening or watching today's show, whichever one you are doing. And let's go ahead and jump into it now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Quantum Conversations. We are doing another trio episode with dr sarah she's i think she i think you're leaving on monday unless unless i lose my passport again which i did already <laughs> with sarah's house in her backyard or one of my uh nieces invites her to a birthday party because that's oh, yeah. why she stayed yes <laughs> <laughs> we went to a harry potter birthday party this weekend oh yeah that's why my story's got me with the sorting hat on and i did a little poll to say what people are so i missed you had a sorting hat. I, I only caught the one with the blow up unicorn in the yard. Oh, right? yeah, no, <laughs> but I think what it was was like a creativity. Sarah's sister had obviously spent like months. Oh. And there was a little, there was a different like curiosity in every aspect of the house. And I took photos of all of them because it's the kind of thing the kids probably just ran around and didn't notice yeah. yet. Floating candles here. And then um, there was like a, a platform, uh, you know, like the Hogwarts Express cat platform that was like a zip, a, a zipping open curtain. So it was wow. really intricately because Anna's very crafty. Isn't she? Yeah, and there was a one. There was a lady helping children build wands out of this wood, and then some kind of putty, and they could stick glitter on it and wrap round. Wow, it was. I whole mean, thing. I I love moms like that. It's not. I just I just that's don't do me. those things. That's but my kudos sister to her. Wow, <laughs> I mean that's yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> She's the one. I'm like, can you just? I'm going to pull you out so you can just teach all of our kids. So we don't have to go through the school because she's a school teacher. She mm -hmm. teaches like first and second grade, but she's always been super creative and into crafts and, you know, making sensory boxes and all that stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I just go play outside <laughs> in the water. I'll turn on the water hose for you. <laughs> I know we do so much water fun. <laughs> We'll paint with mud. Um, exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's, I mean, that's our house. We used to make mud pies as kids, but then when they started to be brought in the house, we wanted to cook them in the oven. My parents were like, right, this is it. Oh, no. <laughs> mud pies. No more mud pies. So we're supposed to talk about hormones today, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're already getting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> um, and so I know, I mean, Sarah, I'm going to miss you when you're, when you're not on these anymore. The, I, we have such fun tangents with you here, yeah. but, um, but that being said, let's, let's, let's give some of your beautiful brain to everyone today, uh, which would be this idea of understanding hormones mm -hmm. and the things that affect hormones and ways to balance it. Because it's, you have such a fascinating background with understanding molecular mechanisms the way you do, yet you really don't take a crazy biochemistry approach to hormones and hormone supplementation and hormone replacement and stuff like that. It really is a unique approach to optimizing hormones that a lot of people don't take. So where do we want to start with the whole hormone discussion? Yeah, actually, I suppose just when I first started getting interested in hormones, I did run uh, blood tests and be quite scientific about it. But I think it's something that with hormones, I mean, men listen to this as well. Mm -hmm. And then all of our sex hormones were once a cholesterol molecule. And then that gets mixed with thyroid hormone and vitamin A to make pregnenolone, the master sex hormone, if that kind of sounds quite a interesting word and then it can get broken down it, you know there's a big when you look at a diagram there's all kinds of hormones in this pathway it's things we've never we don't really talk about much but this pregnenolone can become dhea progesterone 
testosterone, estradiol and cortisol. But then there are a whole other things like aldosterone in there mm. and different sort of things which we don't tend to focus on too much. Or maybe we should. And that's like the problem. But I think a lot of people, men and women, uh, do find that they run into trouble with hormones. Like the commonest would be for men would be estrogen dominance and low testosterone. And then with women, we can have a combination of low everything. We can have estrogen dominance. We can have estrogen progesterone fine and low testosterone. Mm -hmm. Some people's sex hormones are, are okay. Then we look at DHEA and DHEAS. Um, and then there's some kind of uh, uh, problem in there. But I think it's something people forget that the whole pathway also is linked up into vitamin D, into melatonin, because they can regulate it. Um, they're light driven. But again, sex hormones are all for reproduction. So of course, food and how much or how little food we have is going to affect them. Mm -hmm. And again, cortisol being one of the products, if we just have what's called the pregnenolone steel, where we're just massively stressed all the time, and the stress could be a mother-in-law, um, a toxin, uh, staying up all late, food, everything. When the threat bucket gets too full, um, the body likes to make all of the lion's share of the pregnenolone into the cortisol. So that means we have less of all the other hormones. Because in simple terms, we die without cortisol and estrogen. Mm -hmm. So the body's always going to make those in preference to the others because it thinks, well, they are more important. So I think it's a very interesting topic. And it's hugely quantum biology related because the seasons, um, our hormone levels are different in different mm -hmm. seasons. My periods and length of are totally different in summer and winter. Uh, and then obviously there's for females, I'm very interested in the moon at the moment. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Sarah yesterday. I was saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to make a um, an earthing um, sort of abundance talisman. But in it, I have to capture the moon. So I have to look at it through the triangle at the right time. And then I embody it into me. So I, I don't I think I don't know whether she heard or not or whether she was like, <laughs> oh, my God, you know, what's going on? <laughs> so, so again, like the moon is very important for hormones as well. Mm -hmm. but it's kind of not it's not the be all and end all. It's just like everything I've learned. There's so many different facets, like getting really angry about mm. something is going to de deplete my magnesium and each of these pathways to make these hormones need copper and magnesium. So, so there's always something else, you know, we're always in control of them in some form. And I did lots and lots of tests in at uh, Quest, uh, well, it was through via another website of all my sex hormones and stuff, and they're actually fine. And I like to plot mine out on a graph, and I'm actually making an Instagram post later with things plotted and and stuff like that. So whatever I'm doing and living here right now is really conducive to hormones because my progesterone is better than it was in 2003, mm. uh, and the, the, my testosterone is pretty much the same, maybe a tiny bit better. I'm just waiting for the results of DHEA and DHEAS because it's sort of the, these hormones get, all get sulfated as well, which is another really important part. They need to be transported around the body. So sex hormone binding globulin is important. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to be too high. Correct? No. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It tends to, it can pair with insulin, but also if, if you're male or female and you want to work out your testosterone status and free androgen index, you need the sex hormone binding globulin because it might look like you've got loss of testosterone, but it might not be available. Mm. But then also all of these, um, like these hormones, there are lots of their receptors like cortisol, testosterone, estrogen, uh, vitamin D, thyroid, are actually inside cells, like their nuclear transcription factor. So these hormones have got to get inside the cell uh, and to signal. So again, even though it's interesting to have these blood results, it's not the complete be all and end all of the story because the hormone might be inside the cell doing something or it might be bound to a, a, a transporter because there's transthyretin which carries thyroid around we've got transferritin ceruloplasmin that carries copper so these are like mm. boats so so everything in the body you can't just have copper and zinc and stuff in the blood or anything it has to be organized and carried about so there's all of this transportation system that i think is really important and the receptors like we've talked about a lot need to be hydrated yeah 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 so i think that's a great overview of this so step number one would be get the signal to make pregnenolone in the first place right yes. meaning sunrise light meaning adequate vitamin a and thyroid status mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And also the mitochondria make um, these hormones and people think it's just the ovaries and the testes, but estrogen is so important. Mm -hmm. The brain can make it, the kidneys and the mm -hmm. adrenal glands can make them. So that's why some women have a great menopause because 
when the ovaries decide to stop, they, they've got really good adrenals, so they just take over, and they might have lots of mitochondria that are good as well, so they can make their own hormones that way. And then body fat can make a variety. It can make estrone, which is like E3, because it can change testosterone into a certain kind of estrogen. So sometimes if people are low in estradiol, the body will think, I know I'll make some more fat in order to make estrone, uh, because that's how important estrogen is, that your body will find way. So uh, even if we talk about estrogen dominance, we're not saying estrogen's bad. It's just the type of estrogen, and it depends on the context of how much progesterone there is. Right, it's the balance. Okay, so yeah. then... So then from making, being able to make enough pregnenolone in the first place, as you said, like, and for anyone who wants to pull this up, like look up sex hormone cascade or steroid mm -hmm. hormone cascade, and you'll see cholesterol and then pregnenolone and then all of the different hormones that pregnenolone can become. And so, as you said before, the body's going to prioritize the hormones of survival, basically yeah. above all else. So from mm -hmm. your perspective, from my perspective, from Sarah's perspective, it's this idea of teaching the body, like, what can I do on a day-to-day -day basis to indicate to my body that my survival is not being threatened and I'm not being, you know, attacked, chased, you know, you know, confronted in any way because the body doesn't know the difference necessarily between a deadline at work versus, you know, literally someone running behind you and trying to chase you. And so for right. me, obviously telling my body the time of day with circadian rhythm is key. And I like to sync it up with a meal in the morning as well to indicate nourishment, right? That there's food available mm -hmm. in my environment. And so I don't have to ride that cortisol spike, if you will, um, in order to, or adrenaline even to go find and gather and get food, seek food, seek food. And so those are like two, I think, primary safety signals that one can sync up with first thing in the morning to allow that hormone cascade a better opportunity at balance and not just prioritizing it towards the survival hormones. Yep. Absolutely. That's one non-negotiable for me because I struggled with hormone issues for years and years and years. And especially my blood sugar, which, you know, your insulin is a hormone as well. Mine was a disaster until I actually started doing the breakfast because I was so hell bent on doing the intermittent fasting to control my weight, which it wasn't working anyway. Um, but I was so terrified to eat the breakfast. And once I started doing that, a lot of downstream things were impacted positively. Uh, so if you're yeah. still on that train of being afraid, this is why it is so hormone friendly because of what Carrie just mentioned. Exactly. Yeah. And also, um, if you're insulin resistant or deuterium loaded, all the hormones we've talked about get very messed up because people people who research this will always say if the male or the female are insulin resistant. There's lots of talks. And mm -hmm. Ben Bickman is kind of knows a lot about sort of infertility and insulin resistance. And he's very easy to understand. Uh, and again, if you've got a deuterium load, uh, lots of studies and Dr. Borosh and people have found that if you can get rid of the deuterium, if you're trying to conceive. Mm -hmm. It's going to make things easier. So there's so many quantum things related, and we're not saying that everything's all just light and uh, you know, and the the are uh, the new paradigm. That there are very much truths in the sort of traditional paradigm of insulin resistance. But again, remember, blue light and bad sleep makes you insulin resistance as well. Yeah, yeah totally. And obviously, cortisol raises blood sugar, and blue light raises cortisol. Right. That's why, I, time and time again, I tell the story of the lady in my private community that until she started wearing blue blockers, she still had hot flashes. She did everything right. And she's like, wait a second, just blue blockers helped me stop having hot flashes. And I'm like, yes, blue light. <laughs> like, no, you're, some people just have to experience it to actually believe that it's a thing, but it's a thing, you know? Totally. Yeah, exactly. And also the phone as well, because oh, yeah. um, even though my hormone, oh, this you'll be able to see this yourselves when I sort of put posts and stuff out. But uh, before, when I used to be much more on my phone and near computers, I definitely would notice more hot, like little mini baby hot flashes, right? Two seconds just around my period. And I think this is even in my 30s. Oh, wow. So I don't get them. They weren't real hot flashes. I know what people mean. Mm -hmm. They mean waking up sweating and drenched. But, but just a little getting flushed, whereas I don't really get those anymore. But then, I mean, there could be other factors, but I think the whole hot flashes, there's plenty of ways to mitigate those. And, and sometimes if you keep taking things, you you help, you get rid of the hot flashes, but then you get water retention. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, if you try and fight biochemistry with biochemistry, you can end up 
making new symptoms. Yeah. Because the hormones oh. just too clever. When you sit, if you pull up a diagram of the sex hormones and all of the other things that feed into them, you just think if I dared fiddle with this, goodness knows what would come out the other end of this biochemical pathway. Totally. Totally. And frankly, just, those biochemical pathways, I have a feeling we don't even know half of the true no, right. inputs and influences there. So it's like, we're, it's a big ego for us to think, oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give someone this hormone and not think that it's going to affect so yeah. many things that we haven't even studied. And we, the researchers haven't even studied, you know? So, exactly. um, I so also, twelve. Oh, there's like, the, there's about 12 forms of vitamin A and retinol and you can't buy 10 of them, the sun activates our vitamin A and the body just turns these retinols into different forms or variations for different functions. It's the same as the vitamin D. There are 15 vitamin Ds, yet we only talk about storage and active. And then when people pull up this hormone picture, it's very hard to find a full diagram because it's like the Krebs cycle. It's so massive. And there's probably 50 intermediates in all of these. And we ne we only ever talk about 10 of them. And nature wouldn't just make things mm -hmm. that aren't don't have any purpose so what do all these other unusual hormones do that we know we don't talk about you know they they may they're not just like part of a journey i think they each have a function of their own we just right. like you said we focus on estrogen progesterone and the big ones whereas the other ones how do we know they're not the really important ones like allopregnenolone for example is really important for people to get pmdd and it's because it's our own natural GABA agonist. So it's a special sort of progesterone that is like our own Valium. So women who have PMDD, they, this is one thing I do know a study about. Their body's not very good at making allopregnenolone. And for ages, doctors are like, oh, you just, you crazy woman, PMDD doesn't exist. You're just insane. And now if somebody you know, commits a felony on their period, people are like, okay, we can give you, cut to a bit of slack. <laughs> So, so there's all these really, and I just happen to know about allopregnenolone, but there could be so many others that mm -hmm. there's some expert on the planet we don't know about that might be an expert in these sex hormones. So it is a very interesting topic. But I like just let the sun control as much of them as possible. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then, you know, my, my other low hanging fruit here is breath and nervous system, mm -hmm. right? I, I think both. Like, so I know some people will say you can't regulate the nervous system, you know, dysregulation with breath, but I, I've seen it happen in clinical practice. Yeah. Um, you know, some people it doesn't work, but other people it does. And I, I, so I feel like assessing someone's breathing patterns is huge. Uh, assessing one's nervous system and maybe stress, what I call stress reactivity, it's mm -hmm. huge because mm -hmm. if people don't, even, people don't realize that it's not necessarily, you know, your, like you said, your need for progesterone, it's the fact that things have gotten dysregulated because your stress response is just so height and heightened. And so it's like, I don't want to touch hormones if I need to. And frankly, unfortunately, I've seen too many people come to me on bioidentical hormones with, you know, with well-intentioned practitioners, right? Well and good intentions, but ultimately it didn't serve them to the full capacity that they wanted. And in other cases, it was actually very, very detrimental to them. And so another one we don't think about leptin, right? How does right. how does one's leptin status dictate how to how to basically ferry out the fair the hormones, right? First thing mm -hmm. in the morning, pregnant alone, okay. I'm still ovulating, right? So it's going to be what time of the month is it? Is this mm -hmm. a good time to make mm -hmm. a baby? What's yep. Carrie's leptin status, right? All of these things yep. get determined ba like basically as a snapshot day to day. And, it, you know, I, I would so much rather optimize these different pathways yep. through through these tools as opposed to, to what I used, what I did back when I had adrenal fatigue, it was take a bunch of DHEA. <laughs> Which right. can aromatize into estrogen. And also it's totally different if it's a cream or a tablet. And yeah. also you can, the dose, you know, they sell tablets at 25 milligrams, whereas you're meant to just start at two and it's a half. So I took 25 I, milligrams. I, I, I did that too. Yeah. And my testosterone went through the freaking roof. And my doctor was like, oh, are you taking something? And I'm like, yeah, you told me to take DHEA. She's like, stop. Don't do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, this is not good. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but also it went, but just to give people consolation, I've got other data of when I did some testosterone experiments last year and it went to a thousand because it was, I was trying out Too an much. injection. It's like a thousand, this is like the US unit. So it was just stupid. And then I plotted it all out, but it all went back to normal and, and it went back to the original and nothing bad happened. I didn't grow a beard or anything. And then <laughs> same with the DHEA, like I had, I fell down the same trap and just 
just thought, oh, people are taking this because it's a nootropic and it could be fun, same with a pregnenolone. And it got really, it went too high because you can get quite wired if you take too much pregnenolone and DHEA, but it all just went back to normal. Yeah. It didn't suppress because that's the problem. Especially that's what they, att- that's what yeah. a lot of people think is if you start taking yeah. hormones, then it's going to, you're never going to be able to make those hormones naturally again. Then yeah, that's not necessarily true. Same thing happened with me with my DHEA because that was before I even went on like a pregnancy journey. This was like, I think in 2019, it was low. And so I just started taking it because my doctor said, oh, you're you're low, just take some. And everything went whack with my testosterone and DHEA. And then I was able to, before I got pregnant, bring those numbers up naturally using circadian biology and quantum biology. So it didn't suppress it to the point where my body couldn't make it anymore which is good oh yeah definitely and also i think it's more with men who've used trt That's there's a big yeah. there's a big community of men who've used steroids and stuff in oh, sport yeah. who have regret what they did but they do know how to fix it because mm-hmm. that's the other thing it's sometimes better to tell somebody i've made a massive mistake can you help me? Because you won't get your own doctor or things to be able to help you if you've messed up the TRT, but you have to just ask people in the sports industry, mm-hmm. say, I've done this. How do, because you can use all sorts of things like H, is it HCG or HGC? Oh yeah. H-C-G. There's lots of like post, post-cycle things that people know about. And even for women, because some women I've had have like gone OTT with a testosterone gel and you shouldn't be able to overdose. However, you should always measure things because women, we're all different sizes. We've got mm-hmm. different skin thickness, different body fat levels. So how do you know what's actually got inside you? And like you said, some people try HRT and really hate it. And they just say, how do I get this out of me as quick yeah. as possible? Yeah. And, and have I damaged or broken myself? Have I no. done uh, the body will just, your body's not normal. stupid. That's yeah. what I think people, they rely so much on these outside sources that they don't remember our bodies do have an innate wisdom and mm. a way to come back to homeostasis but there's a mind connection. Sometimes there's just like us continuing to try to take things that'll block that. But there is a possibility to, you know, recover from those things. Like I did two rounds of IVF, which I was injecting myself with all kinds of hormones and all kinds of crap and was able to conceive naturally after that, you know? And so, yeah, it's not ideal to do that. And I did a lot of castor oil packs and sauna and cold plunge and all that stuff to kind of pull that stuff out of my system. Um, but yeah, it, your body can recover. So well, and here's, here's, here's yeah, a sign. Yeah. This is something that I want because in the, not that I recommend taking supplemental melatonin, right. But you hear a lot in our quantum biology oh, conversations yes. that taking supplemental melatonin down regulates endogenous production. What, what have you seen in terms of the research? Cause I'm, I've tried to find, I haven't found, oh, I haven't found it. I, I haven't, haven't either. Not so, telling anyone to take it. I still, because we don't know. Yeah. Exactly. If you can make it optimize it, basically it's, yeah, optimize it's, it it's, it's going to not be the same as the light. Cause the melatonin we make is hugely complex because it, it's carrying light. So it does some kind of light signaling at night. Whereas if we take um, a tablet, it's different, but then mm-hmm. I have, there are, there's, there are ones that go either way, but I've found that with jet lag, because I use it for jet lag because mm. um, melatonin, and I've never found that I can't then go by sleep by myself. And also this has reminded me of a topic because I've got quite a lot of seniors who started to do quantum mm. with, but I think it's because I taught seniors Pilates for so long. I, I have a lot of time for seniors who want to be healthy. And they said, could you start to make some material for seniors because they are the ones that ask me most often well I don't make that much hormone anyway can I take melatonin because I probably only produce 10 percent because I just want to get to sleep because I know how important it is and some of them are educated and they've said the same that that any studies there are it's not for people their age anyway or it's on animals and so I just thought that's really interesting that you mentioned about the melatonin and suppression so I think it might depend on age because with mm-hmm. younger people who haven't finished puberty it can be a bit interesting, but that's because melatonin at night controls luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone mm-hmm. and other things to control other sex hormones. But I think I'm kind of think, I don't think you mustn't ever take melatonin supplements. And I'd rather somebody who was say 75 or 70 slept because oh, you know, they yeah. said to me, who cares? Like I probably, you know, I don't care if I shut down my melatonin production. I'm 70. <laughs> and I've said, well, okay. that." And I, I've never, I didn't stop them taking it. They've said, what do you think? And I've said, 
I actually think it probably it could be be potentially very helpful. I just don't know enough. And they've said, I don't mind if you shut down my natural melatonin production. I want to, I'm willing to try this. Have you interviewed Russell Ryder yet? No. You yeah, have you to. You should. Why? What's you should. He's he's like he's done all the, the research on he's melatonin. Like the six, he's With done Zimmerman, sixty years so. of melatonin oh, really? research. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Scott Zimmerman. Um, when we, on a, on an off the cuff comment when we were talking about all of this, he just said, "Oh, melatonin supplements. It's like if people take them for a little bit of a jet lag, they won't really do anything. They're harmless enough, and you know, same as me, it'll just go back to normal by itself." But he sort of was more. I think it depends on the dose and the duration. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. How I mean, Russell, I know, I mean, he's probably he's mid eight. He's mid eighties. He's sharp as a tack. I mean, he's mid eighties, mm-hmm. but he's, I think he's on like, I mean, I don't want to quote him. I can, can guarantee you it's over 10 milligrams of melatonin a mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, he loves it because of all the research he's done on it as a huge antioxidant. And, and so, I mean, Right. I, I guess I, I don't recommend it. I I think people I, I think the com- miss, missing from the conversation and why you see these studies that show that as people age, they make less melatonin is because, number one, circadian rhythm sucks. Right. We're not getting the natural morning light to help stimulate the serotonin. Yeah, you're not pathway. going out into UVA. Right. Like, you know, they're up my you know, I picture my grandparents. They were up watching the 11 o'clock news every night. Oh, you know, and every so, night. Yeah, yeah we and, always watch them. But then you and, get the other then you get the other spectrum of the scenes. I think you I think it's all back to any study. They sometimes just do things on sick people. Mm-hmm. That's why lab ranges are mm-hmm. and I found loads of lab ranges that are wrong because all the ranges have been built on lots of labs running hospitals on sick people. Totally. totally. So I think it's like you'd need a, a group of seniors that go backpacking and you know have allotments and wear blue blockers yes, they don't have a television right yeah. just sleep with the tv on and, and have it have it in the morning. i mean oh, yeah. i think pineal calcification that's is what i was gonna bring up is it as well yeah i was talking with robert gourlay do you know robert Mm-mm. he is that he's a such a fascinating water scientist. Um, oh. He has that company called MEA, MEA Water, MIA. Uh, it's a magnetized version of water that puts a permanent negative charge into the water using vortexing oh. and magnets. Okay. Um, but he showed in a lot of his research, I mean, in tons of his research, frankly, he showed that drinking the correct voltage, like this higher voltage water, reduces calcifications in the body, arterial oh. calcifications, um, pineal calcifications, even calcifications in things like HVAC systems, like big companies in Australia were like, we are needing to replace our HVAC all the time because of the hard water that we're trying to. And so, I mean, I think there is something to be said too, in terms of it for people who might be afraid, like worry about calcification, negative charge in the body. Similarly, mm. Spencer over at Remedy Link, I recommend some of his products. He's the one who also says that voltage spikes help to break up calcifications. And so it'd be fat. It's I think part of also like maintaining a healthy pineal gland is the things that we're doing when it comes to maintaining exclusions on water, earthing and grounding, sunlight on the skin. So yes. the pineal gland also make things like DMT and I, I know the lungs make DMT as well, but it's also the lungs do. Yeah, well, it's mm, to do with some, some this is a really complex topic, and there's unlikely to, there are some people that are really obsessed with it. And like DMT is like our own natural hallucinogen, but mm-hmm. it's also part of what some people believe is when we have a near death experience because sure. we, we can't breathe or our lungs got injured or we have fluid in the lung. It's part to make um, the actual process of part of dying much more enjoyable. Um, and and some people obviously survive, but they're already tripping on their own DMT. So I, I completely believe in non near death experiences from somebody actually going somewhere. But I also think for some people it's biological. Their bodies just produce a lot of DMT um, under uh, you know. And it's usually if you look, you know, you can you can make your pineal gland and your body do this. You know, people that go on these special yoga retreats and they do lots of holographic oh, yeah. breathing. And they mm. eat a certain way. They have lots of saunas. They do kundalini yoga and chanting. And you can, Sun gazing, things like yeah, that. You yeah, you can make yeah. it. You can. But also when looking back to all of these practices they're doing, they go. I had a friend that went to India for this just and he said he had half an hour's worth of like hallucinations um, from this big ritual he did but to me it just he was in india he was grounded all the time he was seeing they they all salute the sun because they do yoga in the morning he would have been eating um and fasting so he'd be depleting deuterium so i think again what you said maybe the and they don't let people do these special ceremonies without doing the whole preparation so maybe that's a sort of um, pineal gland decalcification protocol and then at the end they teach them how to 
you know, ha- you release their own DMT, but they kind of do it through breath and like other stimuli. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something to be said that what you're describing it would be a way to decalcify the pineal gland and, and yeah. maybe the quantum way might take longer if it's very blocked up but there's probably if i drill down into finding out what a bit more about these preparation r- rituals that can be like weeks and then think oh that's very quantum mm. yeah it sounds very quantum to me that sort of stuff um so okay it, just side note though dmt isn't that responsible for lucid dreaming as well oh yes exactly because it's all yeah. to do with sleeping because some okay. people get really agitated at me oh no my dreams have got more vivid and it's your fault mm-hmm. it's like look love or sir if you knew what i dreamt about and i love it when i get one take advantage of it i know that's, right? that's like a whole other dimension you've added because sometimes it can be better redox and just people sleeping better in mm-hmm. general mm-hmm. but i've never thought of after a while you know maybe the, there's calcification clearing because sure you know and that's sort of part of these because some people will say oh no it's not redox because I've got a magnetico and I've done all this for ages and all of a sudden this has started to happen but maybe it's just the next level of the quantum effect because the thing is things can take years and years mm-hmm. to reverse mm-hmm. and get better and it's and all a work in progress you I mean I also think people put up emotional blocks to this idea because oh, yeah. if there's this feeling of for some people it's a feeling of fear of like these out of, almost these out-of-body dreams right where you're mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. traveling somewhere in the universe you know um <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. it's like I, there's all sorts of interesting ones that people have <laughs> that's a whole t- that's a whole <laughs> i once hey, had a comment below dream. what good dreams have you had? I had a mixed dream once. the first time i got persuaded into tr- trying reishi because i went to a biohacking conference in finland and i met eric puro from kappa who's wonderful and lots of other people like sim land and all of those crew so basically they persuaded me to try this really strong reishi, but then I had a dream and I went to sleep and in the dream, I woke up and did a whole load of stuff in my dream, but then I went back to sleep and uh, in my own dream and then went into an even deeper dream. And then I kept kind of waking up thinking I'd actually woken up and then going back to sleep. So I had all these nested dreams within a dream. Within dream. And that has been the most weird experience I've ever had, but it's common knowledge that reishi does that. And, it, and they basically were trying to get me to take it because uh, mm. they wanted to, you know, like laugh later and like uh, what happened well they wanted to know what happened Mm. so yeah there's definitely uh all different interesting aspects to funny dreams and for example reishi hasn't changed my redox potential or anything so there's all these there's numerous factors to these interesting dreams (laughs) how do i bring us back to back to hormones Oh, no, okay. Some of these comments I'm reading about. Okay. Yeah, get, read us one. <laughs> Should we go through the comments? Because, yeah. Yeah. because like I said, I was my my period is about to start, and I was all to say, "Are you going to turn that phone off?" And she was like, "This is my house." No, she didn't say that. No, I'm like, on day yeah. I'm on day like four now, yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, it's okay." Yeah, no, no. But a few days ago, I'd have been like, "Watch." Yeah, it's like, and then she said, "Oh, I need to do the comments," and I just felt like a right book. But that was just the you know that just happens on periods. <laughs> it's fine and my daughter's hanging right in there so yeah so we could go into it'll be all kinds of fun um so someone a lot of questions no, i think i can to... see one low dha that's yeah. often emfs in the bedroom because mm-hmm. you have to look at your hdl as well because with all of these you can't just look at one marker by itself you need like we've been describing so that coming back to it there's pregnenolone at mm-hmm. the beginning dha in the middle progesterone and estrogen at the end so if you've got low dha you either DHEA, gonna, DHEA, 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 yeah. dha you're either going to have a, like low pr- pregnenolone or low other sex hormones testosterone and dhea are typically both low yeah exactly and also it pairs up with retinol that if you've got a ret- and thyroid you can't just mm-hmm. look at these sex hormones i can't emphasize enough if you try and look at one hormone and fix it's that, just not going to be a full picture because that's what i think happens a lot in our mm. community because we will talk you know we have zoom meetings and we chat with the ladies in our group and it's always like i have this one marker and i'm like well and she, she's a stickler for it. Cause I'm like, we're not going to read labs in the group. Like that's kind of beyond the scope. But when you're looking at labs, you mm. can't just look at low DHEA. What's testosterone, sex hormone, blinding gland, Leland, what's, what's going on with your, uh, cholesterol. Yeah, right? exactly. I want, I can, so you have show me low a triglycerides. Oh, yes. Yeah. What's going on with your insulin? What's going on with leptin? Like it, it's, it all like plays in. And you were saying, cause I had, you know, even though we've got the cosmic tower 
And I don't feel like I'm impacted by EMFs, even Mm. though I've said it before, I had somebody come here, even after I did all my mitigation and say, you need to move like that. This is, you're near a lot of EMF and you can't control it. It's just going to come in your house. And we got the tower. And I feel like, I feel like it's working, but it's always good to have somebody else come in and have a similar experience. And you were saying about EMFs and triglycerides, okay, right? You can get like horrible insulin and, and elevated triglycerides right. and tanked HDL, with right? Too much non native. And you'd get nasty HSCRP, you'd right? Get like twos and threes. And we would, because my husband's been running labs too. Like, so all three of us would have, one of us at least, if there was a really big issue, would have one of those being affected. And our my triglycerides are like 44. Yeah, exactly. Mine are 42. And then, yeah. So it, down where I sleep, there's it's completely dark. Like yeah. you probably, you know, the number yeah. of times I've nearly impaled myself on the bench and also banged into the wall or but but also it's like that out trumps the fact that there's a Wi-Fi box mm-hmm. around my feet. And because I'm sleeping on an inflatable bed, most of the time I remember to unplug it. But yeah. last night I was like, oh idiot, you kept your bed plugged in. And obviously <laughs> had the EMFs by my head. And I But not- you've got a tower down here yeah, too. She was a little at 35 and we yeah. have a 75 or yeah, yeah 75 upstairs. And I slept all the way through tonight, even though I thought, oh great, Alexis didn't wake up, but apparently she did a little bit. But then we had cluster wake ups last night. Oh uh, yeah. So I didn't hear that. And I've started to have to I've set my alarm now mm-hmm. because normally I just wake up before sunrise. Oh, this just reminded me my we, so we did a family sleepover last when it gets like super it's super hot in Michigan right now. Mm-hmm. And what for whatever it? reason. Oh, we, we have a new it's 90 right it's 90 and humid oh, wow. it's humid and we um and so like are there than here we didn't want to sleep upstairs because the heat rises it was just it was just a pain in the butt it was super hot and so when that happens we get mattresses out on the first floor and we just kind of crash on like three three mattresses for all of us and um and so last night <laughs> in the middle of the night like you're talking about cluster makeups my, <laughs> my oldest son and he, goes, he sits up and he goes with liberty and justice for all, which is the Pledge of Allegiance, the American Pledge of Allegiance. I was, was like, he, was he dreaming? Or he like... was dreaming. He was totally <laughs> dreaming. <laughs> I was like, buddy. And he just went back to sleep. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> Normally I don't wake up. I was like, that woke me up last night. That reminded me. <laughs> That's funny. We have many times gone over how we sleep sort of multiphasically. Mm-hmm. Just the more you mm-hmm. get into a panic about waking up and counting them, or trying to plan your business or your work in the middle of the night, it'll just become a problem. Mm-hmm. So we, some people just wake up by themselves and just go back to sleep. And last night, it's like up and go Alexis at 3, Alexis at 3.30, Alexis at 4, Alexis at 4.30, James at 5. And then it stopped. And then it stopped. Yeah. And then we just like woke up. Like, okay. My favorite thing, like even in uh, those nights of bad sleep, you know, mom, bad sleep. Uh, mm-hmm. My thing is, or just like, you know, if I'll, I'll go through stretches where it's like a weird, consistent 2 a.m. wake up. But if I, I, if I start to get wrapped, like wrapped into like, oh my gosh, this is hurting me. Blah, blah, like that, exactly. I just try to kind of melt into my bed and mm-hmm. I close my yeah. eyes and I see like these little sparks and I try to like melt into the sparks and like you know at some point you fall asleep right at some point yeah. you fall asleep it's like you dissolve into the ether mm-hmm. um and even if you don't it's like the best thing you can do is calm things at that point yeah. right like yes yeah. slow breathing you know muscle re- progressive muscle relaxation yeah, those are good yeah, yeah i meditate i mean because yeah. we do the same type of meditation the vedic meditation and that'll kind of that I feel like has an internal structuring impact, you know, of the, the mantra kind of just like puts like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I always do that. And it helps every single time. And, yeah. you know, it's an attitude about when you're waking, well, getting woken up too. Cause it's been about a year straight of no two years straight. Cause James is 20 months now. Oh Lord. Um, or my yeah. sleep <laughs> it's just, the baby and then Alexis started having all of her issues and then she was pulling all nighters and it's like, yeah, I mean, you just wear blue blockers and you, it's your mental attitude and outlook on things too, because I could easily blame my kids for a lot of stuff. And I mean, I'm doing all right. You know, you're doing fine. Don't you yeah. feel like, I don't know, like I could honestly have like those, the, the mom night you just described. And then when my body is ready, I go outside in the morning, not necessarily it's, wake up at sunrise. Really, I, I go did outside. it this morning. I was up at like 10 after seven. And I think sunrise has been like 645. And I was just like, that's because I didn't open the garage door and I found oh, a yeah. out that's quiet. So mm. it's like, I think, I don't think the 
the those doors that I went out this morning. Um, well, if I'm, I just slept. I was like, but doesn't it? Don't you feel better though? Like once you go yeah. outside, it's not like you're go not outside, maybe tired. Take my, but... Drink my mineral water, mm-hmm. hydrogen water. Have my canton. Sit out there. Eat. No kids were away because they were both tired from being up all night. And so I just, yeah, I took petal out. Yeah, you walk. took pesky pedal oh yeah actually yesterday you know when I was paddling like uncontrollably <laughs> pedal got so excited I was taking her for a walk she did a like the walk bounce so high she kind of went into a prawn shape in the air you know just <laughs> fell uh, 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 you know anybody who's got a jumping or bouncing dog you know yeah. it's kind of so yeah that's the other thing sometimes if Sarah just wants Sarah time I just take petal yeah. dog out in the morning because I like walking in tree I like to be around trees yeah we I like getting, trees. I like getting the light on me and in my eyes and I, I all, we all like just quiet time mm-hmm. so yeah. I kind of just you know left you know we, we just like I've started to say if it go if I don't have a good night's sleep but just don't tell anybody because don't remind myself yeah if you don't think about it because I've been away. pretty productive today and yeah you just the quantum stuff really helps a ton and mm. yeah if you just don't make a big thing out of it because I could but I just I'm like what's the point because it's just I can't really you can't control like you your can't kids like yeah, it's done. yeah it just ha- it happens but sometimes it's not the kids because in the UK around you know like in fireworks I've not had mm, any here we no. have much more times people get fireworks out and they can bang all night you oh, know God. until 1am until Oof. the police come so no matter what is something else can wake you because I was saying, if I wake up, I'll either listen to an audio book, like, uh, and not care at all. I've been woken up and just go back to sleep. Or I'll sometimes do kind of eye, like massage here, like Chapman reflex points. And then if you have your eyelids closed and just put eyeball pressure on your eyes, it actually stimulates the um, the opposite of the, um, the, the the parasympathetic. So it reduces your heart rate. So there's lots of little tricks that you can do. And Chapman reflex points, you can rub them here as well. Mm. And I sometimes free my pterygoid. It's like a, a really annoying muscle in my jaw and like just make a little sort of face massage for myself. I don't need to see anything because I'm just going around here and it's very, very nice. And then I'll do the eyelid thing at the end. And then by then I'll just sort of go back to sleep myself because it's sort of gentle kind of touching which is kind of everyone and I do I do meditation as well it's love like tree of life meditation mm-hmm. stuff but every, I think it's so important to learn how to meditate by yourself yeah. you have I can to do it without I don't need no apps I no never nothing. learned an app yeah. I just learned the middle pillar and all of other so many different things and I know I can always take that with me wherever yeah. like I'd prefer to listen to an audio book in the night but I sometimes think no just do do it by yourself yeah yeah, that's the beauty of. I know Carrie does the same kind I do too. So you can just do it anyway. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so. I was at the DMT, like getting my license plate renewed, and I was just like, people thought oh, yeah, I was I've sleeping. Done that before. You know, it was like, about like, okay, I'm number seventy two in line. All right, here okay. we go. Yeah, <laughs> is, your, is that is that like the DVLA in the UK? Because is it the DMT you said? DMV. DMV. Oh, DMV. Yeah, we're talking yeah, about DMV. Yeah, DMV. DMV. DMV, DMV yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the same as the DVLA when we in our, in us. It's like when you have to get another passport, mm-hmm. you know, or go to the post office. There's all sorts of things. I know what you mean when there's a massive queue and you just think. Yep. Yeah, what well, are you going to do? If you're trying to get into the United States from another country, that's another time when you can just queue for ages. And you have to just <laughs> oh my gosh. When we're coming back from Mexico and flying into O'Hare, the the three hour, a three oh, hour wow. line. Ooh. It was wild. I was like, oh, we're almost to the end of it. Oh, no, there's a whole, like you turn the hall and you're wow. like, oh, no. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so DHEA. We can't just like look at just the one marker, but. And like Sarah has put, because even though we move off topic, you basically answered the question that when you took DHEA, you just had skyrocketing testosterone. testosterone. Some people will have skyrocketing estrogen. And I had skyrocketing DHEA. DHEA. Mine just didn't turn into either. It just mm. went super high. Oh, wow. Well. So, it I didn't do use, anything. Yeah, it didn't do anything. Um, it just, no, it just turned into DHEA because I just did it for fun. When last year I did a whole lot of experiments on different bioidenticals to learn how to test them. And then I stopped fiddling with them in about before I came here last time. So I definitely mm. don't take anything now. And, it's, yeah. and that's an example of it all will just go back to normal mm-hmm. and then it's better just being left alone and doing quantum. So I think with DHEA, you just need to, 
the dose is way too high yeah. on what you can buy. And and it's like, and stress is such a big one for DHEA, right? EMFs, stress, and yeah, blue light. Sleeping. Yeah. But then like everything, I'm not against anything. There's always a population of people that will swear blind that DHA work. And I did I have got some TikToks on DHEA, but the the, the, the studies and what it actually does, the reason it never pans out how the DHEA company will tell you, oh, it's important for libido and fat burning and egg quality. It, 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 it may not stay as DHEA right. and it all turn into estrogen. Then you're going to like have the biggest estrogen dominance and you're going to get really water retention, water yeah, retained. Exactly. And, and even if it turns into testosterone, if you're if you're a man or a woman, that can aromatize into estrogen. So, you know, it can go so many different ways. That's why the research is all very variable in this population of women, 25% reported that it was lovely, and these percent yeah. said it didn't work. And right. this percent said we hated it and we got water retention and tender breasts and mood swings. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's like the biochemical model can be so flawed. Mm-hmm. It's like you put in one thing and you may or may not have something positive happen, it might be negative. So well, my next, my, I would say my next layer there is always also to look to the liver, right? Oh so. yeah, definitely always look at the liver. If you do want to do any kind of HRT, cause like yeah. Sarah and I both said, like, I don't have like a never, like, I don't have that no. about much stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, if it's full of iron, if you've got high ferritin and high de- um, deuterium, any kind of hormone replacement is not going to work. And if you're insulin resistant, it's going to be, it's going to do weird things. Yeah. I'm about, I think I'm going to do a deuterium depletion because I did the saliva test just for fun. I'd had it in here for like six months and I was at like a 146. But I think sometimes it measures it's not the bad, water. but it's not bad because we live in 33rd latitude and I drink the water here. But so. I think the saliva test, does, the okay. saliva glands actually concentrated. Because when I did my interview with Stephanie Seneff, she said just spitting a lot like football players do is actually a good way to deplete oh, deuterium. Interesting. Whereas some of them are just you breathe into a bag. So it's measuring the Maybe breath. Maybe I'll do a breath one. I don't know. I've been thinking about doing a depletion anyway, just because I, I bought all this water like before I got pregnant and I still have. You still have, have like four cases well, of it. I'm like, I figure it's like, it's like we should, we should do saliva, breath, urine, like all the ways no. to test it, deuterium, this kind of, this kind just of just not thing. blood. <laughs> just yeah. Not, yeah. 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 De- definitely the whole um, high ferritin because that, talk about that. That I, That's not, yeah, that, that's really that, important. That not, because the thing is the liver, like we say, performs so many reactions, including making ketones, um, changing T4 into mm-hmm. T3. So that's the active hormone, even processing thyroid meds and if you've got um too much iron that's accumulated because of misinformation about iron or eating too much taking iron supplements eating sort of food that's in a package that's been fortified with iron um men, iron's regulated by the sun there's multiple factors but a ferritin is a very easy blood test and it's not measuring whether you're anemic or not it, it's telling you how much um iron there is in storage because the ferritin is spilling out of wherever so some people who are real, real iron research buff say ferritin should be zero so people who get a ferritin back and it says like mine was 19 it doesn't mean it, the stupidest thing you can do is rush out and take a load of iron supplements because it's like it's not even reporting on that so just again it's lots of people have ferritin anyway so that's the thing if you've got lots of ferritin and you want to play with um hormones of any kind or even for people who are trying to get into ketosis if your liver's got iron in it and it's not happy it's not going to make ketones or process thyroid properly or and also you've got to detox all of these estrogens even the ones you make your own because bear in mind you know like a um all of these bioidenticals you've got to methylate them Mm -hmm. and you've got to get rid of them because that's the other thing certain women with estrogen snips like slow comt and other things they maybe need to think about the dose and like you said at the beginning i think for some women a really small amount of estradiol can be really important but tiny tiny Mm. because again like like you've said these hormones are ones that we make ourselves i think they're about sort of 15 estrogens that we make and they need to be out you know and when we start adding synthetic hormones it doesn't matter if they're bioidentical or not they're still not your body ma- still has to process yes, it got- the liver still has to get rid of it yeah, exactly. yeah yeah so what are your favorite liver supports oh which i just really like the cast yeah we're packs. obsessed with the castor oil packs mm-hmm. i did this weekend a giant one i did a giant one and i sat in the sauna and then i just did like castor oil all over my whole body and i was like oh. in front of the red light panel. in front of the big giant red light panel <laughs> 
I love that. I laid on the ground. I almost ran out in the yard naked and I was like, no, I'll get in big trouble for that one. Yeah. yeah, My husband wasn't here. We do all of our, (laughs) all of our stuff when he's not here. (laughs) We've been watching um, the house of dragons and he hates that too. We annoy, I know we annoy the crap out of my husband sometimes. Oh yeah, we do. But also it's like the whole naked thing. We never talk about it because if you found out, he'd be (laughs) naked in your garden. It's not together. We don't get naked together. Also, he does separate. He'd be, he'd be angry forevermore, thinking that the neighbors have seen. And, oh, you know, and I've found this place that, like, it's very invisible. And it's like the whole thing that time you came out of the shed naked is because all the towels have been taken. <laughs> it was when we had the first paddling pool and Alexis used, like, 15 <laughs> towels one day. Think about that movie, Old School. He's like, we're going streaking. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's like the castor oils also, because I've got the little thyroid. Oh, yeah, you have the thyroid. Like, pack. Looks like a yeah. sanit- Do you call them sanitary towels? In yeah, this? yes, like a uh, sanitary I pack. I might go up to CVS wearing my thyroid <laughs> pack. And then I've got the ordinary liver one. But I remember I got... I, spent, I have the giant one. I love that one. I got the oil absolutely everywhere once and on my other T-shirt. And then I thought, oh, I'll just leave it. I'll wash it off tomorrow. So I slept with the T-shirt covered oh. in oil and I I couldn't, it was you like you sleep. said, it was, it wakes, it was very it disruptive. So don't sleep with the castor oil packs. And I wouldn't even do them super close to bed. Mm-hmm. I don't. I do it in the middle of the day in the sauna. Yeah, we got a ton of questions on that on the last video. It was people like, why not do castor oil packs at night? Why not do them every day? Why not? I'm I like, just sometimes say to people, okay, don't listen to anything don't I say. Do, just do it. Do and it. And um, just deal with what happens. Because yeah. the whole thing about it just on my clothes, on my T-shirt, that it was enough. It was enough. To, to, yep you know you gotta you know everyone kind of reacts differently to those for me i last month because this month my cycle came right on day 28 Mm -hmm. like not really any bad pms it was fine this month before i was into Mm -hmm. castor oil packs because they just feel so good when you do them and i was just i have a rule don't do them the week before your cycle and definitely don't do them every day and i just I forgot, you know, I have these rules and for a reason, but I was doing it. I do that stuff as well. And my cycle came like three days early and I got a massive headache and I'm like, oh yeah, it's the castor oil packs. Like it's just, but that might be like with me in this cycle, even though the hormones are all really good. I've been in the cold plunge. Oh, well, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just go in for one minute. It won't do any harm because I'm at the moment working to clear completely out the, you know, the forge. I've, I've oh a, yeah. I bought a new um, a net. net. I'm really excited about to get every the last little bits out, but then it's like you can't help yourself and go in it. Yeah, but I think I've done it that many times. I've even swum in lakes for an hour of the day before my period. I, I did no this choice. month. I was in the cold plunge the day before. I think it's this like, month, and it was fine. Yeah, same here because I kind of just go in and out. Like I, I just, just go by how hot. I feel because everyone wants like rules and like a protocol. You kind of have to just like experiment with yourself because some people might do fine doing castor oil packs like up until the day of the cycle. Mm. But for me, it always makes it come a few days early because it can uh, get rid of estrogen, you know? Yeah. And then it's all back to, I was saying right at the beginning, estrogen is not this nasty thing that we want. Right. We want to have some estrogen. Like some. Right. Yeah. And And then then I got a massive headache. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm sure like, our ancestors got cold before it before they yeah. cycle. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's all like everything to excess. It's always just because something's good, it doesn't mean you have to do it all, all the time, time every day. And yeah, then it'll bite you in the bum. Yeah. And just, you know, use common sense. Yeah. And it doesn't and have to be perfect. You don't have to be because that's the thing perfect, we were talking yeah. about this morning, or I don't know when we were talking about, just like because the um some of our group members they get really hung up on like I need an exact minute amount to do this and exact amount of ounces of this to eat and the timing of this and this has to be perfect. And I'm like, if if you came to my house, you would probably get a headache because I don't weigh and measure anything. Like I just kind of, it's like very intuitive, like all of us, I don't measure my, my minerals. I'm just like, oh, this, this is good today. Or I don't need that. You know, it's like you get into these like intuitive routines, like this month before the day before my cycle, I hadn't even like, I wasn't even looking to see what day it was. I just felt like we did a nice hike. We'd been laying out in the sun oh, yeah, yeah. and I was like, Oh, I'm going to get into the cold plunge. Cause I just want to today. And then my period came exactly on day 28. It's been totally fine. And so there's best practices, but then there's also learning how to tune in to your own rhythm and sometimes saying, Oh, I don't have to have a protocol and a tracker for everything, you know? Yeah, exactly. Cause it's like, it's all depends on like, I'm sure I eat different amounts every day. Cause mm-hmm. sometimes oh, I, I definitely do much the day before mm-hmm. because 
I did, you know, there's just too, there's so much. And if you, I don't know, I do, we've gone over this so many times. And I think there's much massive value in somebody learning to do a ketogenic diet and just learning how to take notes and mm -hmm. how much ketones and how much protein makes these numbers come out. But you mustn't do it forever mm -mm, mm -mm. because there's, you know, and it depends on the person. Like for some people, tracking would freak them out, but other mm -hmm. people, they just need to learn how to do it because mm -hmm. they don't understand what 20 grams or 30 grams looks, looks like. Looks like, yeah. But then, you know, I think it's, um, what works for me people wouldn't I always give people certain things I've eaten and they reject it because mm -hmm. it's stuff like liver or raw, oh, yeah. or, or raw egg yolk in coffee or you know shrimp or I made this amazing lamb and coconut curry which is so easy and I was just saying to Sarah I was adding up the fat and the protein that this is like so perfect for certain mm -hmm. macros but then people may not like the taste of it and right that's the other thing we have people have different tastes oh yeah have different budgets yeah yeah, Sarah's always cooking smelly seafood in my kitchen. No, I'm not. No, Matt, no, Matt bought, Matt bought, a, went on about oh, the salmon. He bought a giant king salmon and it basically made the whole room smell of drains. Yeah, it was for rains. <laughs> no, no, drains. Drain. Drain. Oh, drain. And you know how sometimes if you get a bad trout or a bad salmon, it tastes of drains or earth or. Oh, bottom. yeah. But it tasted good. The salmon tasted fine, but it just smelled it really bad. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that, and also I made a curry that was way too hot once. Oh Alexis yeah, Alexis stole it. got it, and she was getting a runny nose. Yeah, and she <laughs> stole it. And Matt said she because Alexis never farts ever and, or anything, and he said she was farting like mad. But I said well, that's what happens if you steal food. <laughs> <laughs> it was just too hot. Even that's when that was the day of waiting for the coconut milk because I needed to dilute it. Oh yeah, well, I'd already diluted it a bit, but it was still like you know mouth burning. It was the ghost peppers from oh the shop down yeah the ghost peppers Ooh. yeah. Yeah, we've had all kinds of fun adventures. <laughs> yeah, there's like, something happens every day, and I keep remembering to say we need to bring this up in quantum conversations. <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting. And anything, anything else with the hormones? Um, I do want to. I do want to point this out, though. Like, I don't do anything. The only, my only non-negotiable every single day is morning light and oh, blocking yes, the artificial light at night. Right? Like yeah. that's. Otherwise, it's I, I loved it because I had someone in my community. She was just like, well, I've gotten kind of less regimented with my magnesium. And instead, I'm kind of going by, do yeah. I want an Epsom salt bath? Do I want to yeah. like, do that's I want a supplement? And I'm like, that's beautiful, you know, because she she's actually you. asking her body what her body is needing, you know, yeah, and it's so. Mine's the same. It's always the sunrise. And no, I won't even take my phone. I won't open it. I won't let anything spoil it. And for me, vitamin D is a big nemesis for yeah. any northern latitude people. So I'll always make sure I can get that. And then the same with the blue blockers. Mm -hmm. It's like what we have watched like um, dragons and we've got started earlier. And I'm yeah. like, right, when this, the hydrogen machine bings, we're going to bed. Yeah, we both like do hydrogen inhalation and watch. And, and I've even had to, I, I can't watch it without the red. The red, I yeah. Have to have the red yeah. ones. And it's like, no, we're not watching this next episode. When the hydrogen <laughs> like machine. Like no, it's like, no. And then if we go up, Alexis goes up. And yeah. we been like last night, we were, it, we were down before nine. Nine, yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, actually. it's really good. And yeah. it's like, cause it's all back. So you have to have some joy. Yeah, you, you have, do. Or you have to learn, okay, how can I still watch TV? Watch the rules, watch the cutoff. I yeah. have to have red, blue blockers and I've got a really dark bedroom and no fiddling about once I've come. Yeah, back. no phone. Ma I did um, a magnesium bath oh, afterwards. Yes, yes. Uh, we don't have pop. We don't eat. We, we don't, don't eat. No snacking we while we, we do hydrogen inhalation. <laughs> It's, it probably looks kind of strange to oh, anybody. Yeah. It's like both of us hooked up to these machines with red blue blockers on. I've got yeah, a blanket. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. All, and then I just like to go straight to bed. And that's why we have, you know, if you have an argument or look on social media, oh, yeah. and then try and sleep. That's a good way to have weird dreams. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know. I always like I have to get my husband back on track some nights because he'll get so negative. And so I just start talking about the baby. I'm like, oh, today he was doing this and doing that. Like I have to like put him back on track and put myself back on track before bed. Cause that energy like that you go to bed with is so important for your hormones, I think. And just overall. And your mitochondria the next yeah, time. Right, your mitochondria. But also the other thing in terms of like uni unity, like um, Matt and I have, you know, talk a lot and, you know, I know certain things to bring up to make him yeah. happy again. Because yeah. in the morning, sometimes I'm like, oh shit, the eggshell show is out. So yeah. <laughs> what, what, what subject can I bring up? So, and what we and Matt have been saying is like every single person has something in common that you can have a really good conversation yes. about. It's just yeah. some people have more a higher percentage of things in common than others. But I'll always find a common denominator or a common thing that we find really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, there's other things like I know if I bring up that subject, he'll suddenly be like really excited. Happy. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's what I do with James. You have to learn. Yeah. yeah, because it's like sometimes I leave the buddy, the James ones for you, but then I've got like, oh, have you listened to this business podcast? And do you oh yeah, he loves got... to talk. You guys talk about the business podcast sometimes. Okay, there's yeah. all sorts of things, or just you kind of just learn. Okay, I can either just like go about my business or I can make an effort to have a conversation about something we're both really interested. And we actually get like, we, everybody has bad moods. Mm-hmm. If both of us start to talk about it, we, it changes the dynamic. And I think that's the same for everybody. Yeah. But p- there's not a single person on the planet. I wouldn't give a chance to, because there's always be something we'll, find yeah, it's really interesting to talk about. Or oh, every single person will teach me something. Yeah. Totally. Totally. I love that. I love that take on it. Um, but also then on the other angle, there's only very few people I'll properly let in past my, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not guarded as in rude, but there's a big, there's a Fort Knox and there's a selected like, and only, I only need one or two people that I really mm-hmm. get on with. And I'm happy with oh, that. Yeah. I don't even have the four. I you no, know, I do have the four. I've got like the four trusted people because I had five and then one had to go, but there's, that means there's space for a new like person. I was saying to Meredith about this, how you just have to have those people that you mm-hmm. trust and mm-hmm. you know, you can just tell them, you know, about like the weird you stuff. You can tell them like. about your dreams and like yeah. if things you're excited about and they don't knock it down. No, exactly. Like you, you know, always tell me stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Like, get it, I mean, getting back to, I think reading through a lot of these comments on our last video and hormones, one theme that continues to come up and it comes up in my community too, a lot is I'm in perimenopause and I'm in menopause and my hormones are declining. What do I do? How do I handle this? Stop saying that. Just yeah. like um, with me, like I'm only 47. So I was expecting my hormones to be on a, and they're not. So I'm totally like, actually don't keep saying you're in perimenopause. Just don't. Yeah, people make a big deal out of the perimenopause if, stuff. If, and if I'm like. Never done quantum or never cleared the iron out, you know, done all these things. Don't say they're on the decline because they might like do that. Because mine have now, like, I'm not going to say, I'm not for one minute claiming I can reverse the menopause, but I've thought, oh, actually. There's but a lot does it of, have I, to be I horrible? I myself a lot more time. Yeah. And, well, and does it, and does it, is it a bad thing? Oh, well, it's normal. It's like, my mother had a, my, I still remember yeah. what was your menopause like, and just, well, nothing. I just, the, my period stopped and I was like, okay. Yeah, that was my family's, my mom and I'm grandma's like, experience too. No more Tampax. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, Cause my mom got cancer when she was 42 mm-hmm. and all the chemo put her into early menopause. So I have no I idea know. what I'm supposed yes. to deal I with. I always but ask like, people, um, what like, happened to your mom? Some people make inquiries and I ask questions. And if there's somebody on a lot of hormones at mm-hmm. a young age, I'll always say, did something happen rather than, Oh, this is far too much hormones. Why are you taking all this? I'll always yeah. say, and did something happen? Because and- Becky, who is a group, our, our group person, she had a full hysterectomy at age 38. Gosh. And right. she's she's my age, maybe a little, I think she, maybe she's 44. And she's not taking any hormones. Right. And yeah. I've had she a- had Hashimoto's and really she bad thyroid. That. And she totally reversed Hashimoto's, got her thyroid back to normal. And she didn't take stuff, you know? What I've noticed with Becky is she keeps it simple. And yeah, she, she does. Just like, has a few neat things she's found move the needle yes, for, her. for her. Yeah. And she just keeps doing them. Yeah. And she doesn't inc- constantly do shiny new objects. Yeah. So. She doesn't. She's very consistent. She's going to be here next weekend. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. She's going to come visit. But she, yeah, she's very consistent. I've known her since 2019. We met, we were both mm-hmm. doing carnivore. And I was like, she had used carnivore to completely reverse Hashimoto's. But then both of us kind of got to the same place with carnivore, where it's like we have we found quantum. She actually did QBC with me. Um, oh, that's group. right. That's yeah, right. She yeah. was in the very first cohort, and so she's just like super consistent. And she mm. also lives in Nebraska. And she keeps it simple, and she doesn't get you know she has certain things that she likes that yep. when we have things we like. Yeah. But then most of it's just consistently doing it without ad- overcomplicating, and yep. she doesn't overanalyze or get mm-hmm. in the big tins no. because she's very matter of fact yeah. and level-headed and yeah I really I appreciate Becky that's why she's one of my group coaches and I've just I always can count on her to be very level-headed about things and when people are like I've had a full hysterectomy or I'm completely in menopause am I totally screwed I'm like no no one's ever totally screwed but 
you know, I, and again, I'm not going to draw a hard line with someone and say, you should never, ever try hormones or what I, I do draw a hard line with pellets. Oh, yes. The the woman with an estrogen of 2000 that I've, I was the only person that ever ordered labs. For yeah. Her and I was like, oh my God. How goodness. can you give her pellets and not order a lab? Because lots of doctors Especially are estrogen. wild to me. The, the whole testing and, and, and labs thing in the UK is totally different to the US. And I wow. just think it's something that there are certain times you do have to test things. You have to test it. And you have to learn how to be independent of yeah. yourself. Like lots of people have contacted me. So can I order off Quest and stuff like you did? Of course you can. Yeah. I don't even have a doctor here. Or yeah. Of course I don't have insurance. Ulta either. Labs is the one that we've yeah. both used. It's and, so easy and to just uh-huh. write your own panel and go get it. But this is all about the best, the more people can be independent mm-hmm. and feel like they're not being controlled. That is a great source of joy and yes. happiness and freedom. And Definitely. If, if you know that you know you can order your own labs and you don't have to ask somebody who's going to take a cut and probably order lots that are irrelevant and then tell you no yeah yeah or tell you no or interpret them wrong at least you can have this little thing of some labs that you can buy and interpret for yourself Mm -hmm. and it's just about being independent yeah exactly yeah yeah and then like sarah always says try something for yourself Mm. you know if you did want to try any sort of hormones you'd really want to make sure your liver is in good shape you know you don't have excess ferritin Mm. you know you're not your liver's not all clogged up because that will be a recipe for disaster for any kind of hormone replacement and if you and I'm not saying to do this, but if you did want to, I would stick more to like a topical mm. gel because there's a circadian release for hormones. You could time up with the circadian release and a gel, a lot of times it'll come out of the body quicker. Yeah. And it's also when I was um, talking to Sarah about the injection, even there's a testosterone, cyprianate and propionate, and you can mm. get one that's a week. So it'll shoot it up and then it drops down and then you shoot so that's how men would do it. You can get ones that have got 24 hour half lives or three day or mm-hmm. seven day, but you're always doing this spiking and allowing it to go down. Whereas even though the people view the gel as inferior, at least it's sort of a bit more like that. Yeah. It's not going to be perfect. And you sort yeah. of can choose the gel. I think you'd have to check the half life. You can find out, okay, testosterone, estrogen get made at this time of the day. Mm-hmm. So I'll put the gel or the cream at on that time. at that time. Because progesterone is more of like an afternoon. Night, yeah, yeah. And then it'll, it'll be there for you overnight. Whereas estrogen, testosterone. Morning. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can yeah. sort of, when you do the creams, you have a bit more control. Like vaginal cream is yeah. always been mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard a lot of good stuff about that, but yeah, that's what my whole take on hormones is, is like try, you know, if you really want to try it for yourself, you need to do labs. Like, because also like if we were talking about DHEA, but if oh, you yeah. take loads and loads of progesterone, it can turn into, it can like fire up prolactin Oh yeah, and then you can't sleep properly. And people hardly ever test for that. Although it's really cheap in the UK and everywhere. You just order it as part of a mm-hmm. sex hormone panel. So if you put just a little bit in and see how you feel, if you just put a great big dollop in, it, it could turn into it'll something, turn into else. something right. else. It, going back to that whole <laughs> biochemical, like pathway, you yeah. can't, you don't know what's going to happen. We know this much even though people talk like they know everything, they they don't, you know, and no one knows individually how your body is going to react to things. And we've, we all see that as practitioners of like the person that reacts to red light therapy, you know, I'm like mm-hmm, what, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. But yes, that or is methylene blue. You know, that's why I have hey, everyone do have- one drop of methylene blue reaction oh also yeah other things that people oh, some people react to red light. Yeah. That's what, yeah. 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 And so yeah. Cold plunges. Some people tell me, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But there's so many different variables. I just think, you know, I'm not against anything. I just think if you fix your terrain and your, you might not even need it. I always go back to the terrain and supporting the nervous system, sleep, stress, and getting the right amount of sunlight, especially morning sunlight, because that's where a lot of those pathways get activated is in morning sunlight on eyes and skin. And so, and also remember that vitamin D regulates sex hormones. So if you're supplementing that's, a, and also melatonin will. So sometimes you have to think how many other hormones am I already Am I taking? putting in? Cause people don't think of vitamin D as a hormone. And vitamin A is a hormone as well. Yeah. So I think uh, categorically vitamin A supplements are terrible. Oh yeah. The data supports that. So you know, but food sources limit mm, the blue light exposure. That's where the, the retinol phobias come from is the synthetic retinol. Right. 
Right. But there's much more to it. Like when you listen to Morley's interview, we were doing a, a four part series. He yeah. knows all of the data yeah. and all of the story of the where retinol was framed and, as a monster. But remember, like we said at the beginning, retinol, you need vitamin A to bind with cholesterol and thyroid to make pregnenolone. So it, it again is a really important part of your hormones. Yeah. But, you know, if you sit in too much blue light, you make your vitamin A nasty. Yeah, and, exactly. And doesn't work properly it uncouples. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, it does always tie back to light and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. No. I, I mean, it, come, it comes down to like, it's hormones are a complicated thing to right. mess with until you actually like have a lot of foundations in place yes. before you even yes. think. But also, about... um, I don't buy this anymore because the number of things out of my own discipline I've learned mm -hmm. and like um and Sarah doesn't have a biochemistry degree and she no. can just follow all of this so I don't buy this oh let's just dumb everything down I'm not being Dr Cruz in any way I just think a lot of this you know you you can learn it yourself and, yeah. and not and, and the more that you learn by yourself the more doors it'll open to understand Dr Cruz maybe to understand Dr Pollock to understand Harold by yourself and not to just think oh that's too that's too confusing I want somebody to do it for me. It's mm -hmm. they're your hormones, your body. And, and, and they, the more that you attempt to learn, the more you'll have the capacity to learn. Yeah. Uh, and I think totally. it's, it's maybe it, yeah. it could be confusing, but I always have, I have lots of friends who don't have a degree as I've got my, one of my best friends doesn't even have any, what, what do you call it here? Like even before degree doesn't have any qualifications. He's probably the most intelligent and he can learn anything. He's always asking me about what's that light and what does this do and he, he can learn so i think again yeah d don't under that's the other thing don't un uh, old dogs can learn new tricks and that's the other thing about seniors and older people is it's never too late to learn so yeah. i've got seniors that really embrace the quantum and some of the questions i'm like thinking whoa and, and they've been just maybe some of them have been a school teacher some have been a nurse and they can learn about this sort of yeah. stuff. And yeah, I don't have any advanced like, degrees. Yeah, exactly. Now, I mean, not necessarily by choice. I had a lot of crazy stuff. My dad passed away. My mom got cancer. Like everything in my life just exploded at that time. And it was like, I got to work. I don't dumb you know? anything down for yeah. you. If I'm going to tell no, you something she tells I've been me. reading, I just like say it as if yeah. I was talking to... You know, and I think, and you've had to like just learn it. All. I just figure it out. Yeah, I just yeah. learn. I I know how to go and do research and read papers, and I've I've had to teach myself all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's yeah. People will come. Oh, you're not a doctor. I'm like I don't want to be. Yeah, that's, that's, Honestly, that's I really that's don't. Why I, I, don't wanna, I don't want to be a doctor. That's why I trust you, and that's why you know. If I talk to doctors how I talk to you, they wouldn't understand anything. Wow. Well, no, they wouldn't because they just wouldn't. They even the labs that we talk about, half of them doctors wouldn't run anything. Oh, yeah, because Matt, my husband, wanted yeah. to get his what it, no, the he wanted terms. to get homocysteine. Did you know anything about yeah, homocysteine? Us, yeah, we think it's a red herring. Yeah, what do you yeah. what do you think about homocysteine? We've been having this conversation. Well, I, well, I think it's a impaired sulfation, right? Is what I is, is yeah. what I or impaired sulfur metabolism because as as a means of generating extra sulfur in the body. I mean, obviously there's a methylation component to it as well, but I think it's but indicative. Martha, but if, of all of our labs, that's all the, three of us. There's something not right with the yeah. homocysteine, and everybody else, you know, it's got. There's, we've worked out all the reasons why somebody else's whatever would be different. Yeah, and that's the only common denominator. Is For me, you and Matt and Matt. So well, what's your homocysteine? Because there is there. I think it's there's not a just functional range. No, no. Not just lower is better. You can have too low of homocysteine. Oh no, too. it's not that. We're it's, all high. We're all too high. Like above nine. I think the functional range is six to nine or five to seven, five to yeah, eight. Five to eight or nine, yeah. Like if 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 this if it's too low, but also when you look at it in the lab panel, it's just in the it comes under. B vitamins. So, and it's not, I thought yeah. it would be a card. People say, oh, if you've got a high homocysteine, it's a cardiovascular marker. But well, then all the other nasty markers as yeah, well. Yeah, my A1C and insulin, all but of could, that. No, but like, here's the deal, right? Could it also be, though, that your body needs more sulfur metabolism because you're get, making more vitamin D? You're, you need to be able to sulfate your hormones. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. is it always pathological, right? Is there a biological reason why your body would need more? But also maybe the range is wrong because the ferritin, uh, the, uh, you know, to be allow people to have ferritin of up to 300 before flagging is horrible. It should be as soon as it's got to 80. And then- Okay, um, see my homocysteine is actually in range, quote unquote, but it's 
it, the range is zero to 14.5. Oh, yeah, mine's 12.7. And my, yeah, the range is typical range is zero to 14.5. Yours is like 12 something. Yeah. yeah. When they, we've literally almost got this exactly the same number. <laughs> so weird. I think Matt's was similar too. Yeah. I'm like, so, what is something going on in the house? Oh, no, no, let's not start that. Maybe. Well, I want, why don't you test? You should test it when you go back to the UK. Can you do that? Right. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, can do. yeah, it's one of those yeah. quite expensive tests, but mm. something like that, because I've been yeah. building panels here, I've actually been fiddling about and looking at like labs in the UK. So you can get everything. You just have, you can't buy it all in one shop, basically. Right. Yeah. Right. But the lady I did, cause I did a nurse practitioner cause I can read my own, but I was curious to see, like get someone right. else's opinion. And she was like, just take B vitamins to bring oh, your no. homocysteine down. All you need to do is take synthetic Bs. And I was oh. like, uh, no, not doing that. I did start taking, uh, the organ oh, blend. Yes. They were good. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, yeah. Cause and I, I do actually feel better with so the organ blend. Wine, but then I normally yeah. eat liver and more meat. And then here, I just we haven't been eating as much meat. To. Yeah. And then we've been eating meat, but not very often. Not not, not because we don't not like red it. meat. Yeah, it's just because it's not that we don't like it. It's just there's been other things on offer, like seafood and yeah, we've been eating tons of seafood and or, or there was times for ages where we, like there was back to the not having a meal. Then more recently, <laughs> what did you say of Friday night? Like my husband got all excited. He's like, I really really want this seafood. This place called Wahoo here in in uh, Atlanta. He's like dying for some wahoo i want the calamari i want this and he's like all excited about it he drives across town to go pick it up gets home and my kids are just freaking climbing on the table they're all crazy and he's like, oh, yes. he's like I, I just lost my appetite i can't even eat this yeah <laughs> all the wildebeest <laughs> they're like he, 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 no this happened exactly this morning because what was it um, I'll get ribs for Alexis. You and Sarah can have what you want, and I'll just cook myself some wings. I was like, no, you yeah, have yeah. it with us as well. I know he won't eat with us. Yeah. He won't, the, he won't the kids please. here will this is like if anyone wants to lose weight, you can come stay at my house because half the time you try to eat, there's a child that's gonna do something, you're gonna get jumped on, they're gonna break something, and you're like, I'm not even hungry anymore. Like I don't even want to do this. Well, yeah, we, it's like the whole thing about the uh, the wildebeest. We had to. It was all back to. Uh, I think I was just saying because if people, I don't want people to think we're anti iron or anti. No, so I'm to totally to yeah. And I did cook the context of it. Yeah, I cooked filet mignon. I mean, I've been cooking. Oh yes, lamb, but. We, yeah, think it gets crazy filet here. Filet mignon for British people listening means fillet steak. Ah, uh, yeah. James ate <laughs> of it, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that that I for the homocysteine, I just started know. taking the organ blend That's to a good see. Point. I can re I'll reorder homocysteine. I'm gonna reorder it but too. I have plenty of B vitamins. And I think as I went in the um the Muslim shop that I've started to go into oh, early yeah. friendly, they've ordered me some liver specially, so I need oh, to go and get okay. it. Said, oh, be she walks tomorrow. all the shops around here. The some random, interesting. The shops. Like, oh no, I'll see you tomorrow for your liver. <laughs> Sometimes when you go into a very ethnic shop and everyone's speaking, you know, Arabic or whatever, you feel like you should be there and I wasn't dressed in sort of cover of that attire. Oh, yeah. Somebody'd be offended. But I go in there sometimes, like, oh no, see you tomorrow. And you know, for your liver that we'll order. And I'm like, okay, I'll go back. So yeah, she goes into the seafood shop. Oh, yes, all the the Vietnamese time. people. Yeah, yeah. And then the halal shop. There's we've got a lot of interesting but also things around here. Shrimp I've ever tried here. The jumbo shrimp from the Vietnamese shop still are better. But oh yeah. I think it's yeah, we have to we might have to well, I'll remember so many things I meant to say in this conversation, but I think the homocysteine thing, that's a really good point. Remind yeah. me to add it to the panel because I think yeah. it might exactly be that the, it's just not eating the liver and stuff like that. Yeah, eat. that's what I think it is. And for me, some of my labs, I was like, oh, this is just purely like I haven't been as like consistent as I need to be with getting in my lamb and I've been eating more seafood and I've been eating like chicken, which is not ideal, but it's just been like, sometimes I just have to eat at that moment or it will not happen because yes, my kids yes. are so crazy that I'm like, I just, you know, <laughs> so. I forgot about the wildebeest. Sorry. That just was one of those things that really, I just cackled and laughed. James is trying to climb up the stairs on the table that you move him in one room and he goes to the other table and it's just, yeah. It's a lot of beautiful fun. chaos. Beautiful chaos. It is. It's a good <laughs> yes. thing. I'm happy for but, it. But also, that I was thinking, you know, this I was saying to Sarah with my hormones, I could have had a baby this month. 
but maybe my body and my thinks, oh, this is a place where there's already children and a family. Yeah, this is oh, a good you, place oh, to This be. is a good place to make a nest. So there could be anything that could have like made the hormones. And it's literally because I do look at like hormone ranges a lot. And, you know, may, there's all other factors. But this particular month, everything was in such good places, even the back end of the cycle, which could be bad for older women. It mm-hmm. was like, oh, yeah, I said the egg could have been planted here. It's going to be so angry. It's not being fertilized. <laughs> and we'll find out. Saying it's viewed, it's viewed, something else has viewed this place as a nesting. It's, the nest could be built here. And it would be safe and there's other females and there's other like nest companions. So I think there's a lot more to the hormones than just the biochemistry. So just too. Environment, you. joy, laughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really it's laughter. true. Yeah. And I think we have to quit, like, like I've said earlier, focusing on just one number and freaking out about it. Like there's like with the homocysteine, I'm like, well, insulin's good. Like all these mm-hmm. other markers are like really, really good. So I'm not going to freak out about it, you know. But also I think who you spend time with a lot influences your hormones and your, you know, don't we become the five people we spend the most time with? Yep. So I think that, and also women's cycles synchronize for a reason. So definitely being around other females and males, because of course, male energy and male happiness is really important as well. But then when women are around other women who um, the something inside me would think, oh, if I had a baby in this environment, there's other people to help me look after it, I think. And that's just like you were saying at the beginning about feeling safe. Yeah. Because, you know, even though my mum thinks America's full of guns and I'm going to be shot or run over any minute, I don't think it's dangerous where I am here yeah. at all. There's not anything that's happened to made me feel I'm going to go home tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, good. A- I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> So the whole, you know, there's you have to live somewhere or someplace to understand fully, and yeah. you have to try stuff and do stuff, and you have to just give things a chance. Yeah, you do, you do. Yeah, and you can't just put things and markers in a petri dish. It doesn't. Yeah, exactly work that way. I think what Carrie said that's really important is to like compare quantum practices back in the UK because there are lots of disgruntled people that think, oh, this is like this because I live in Canada or yes. the South Island of New Zealand. Oh, that's a with- whole other topic. Uh, talking about magnetism yeah. and UV and just haplot- There's oh, People think, oh, everything will be better if I move to the equator. I, I would not going to. I would not I'm move to the equator. Like, I'm, I'm too hot. I'm already thinking, oh my goodness. this. Yeah, it's 33rd latitude. It's not and even got going yet. Well, yeah, it's, it's only like a UV. The, the equator for me, I'm happy at this, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I need uncoupling. If I don't uncouple, you know, at various points throughout the course of a year, there's no way I would. Yeah. You know, also, that, that... I've never slept with air conditioning in my room. And I think that would push me over the edge. This like I'll tolerate certain things, but I'm not having that in my bedroom. And mm-hmm. I'd rather go back, you know, some somewhere where, you know, there's less the sun. There may not be as much UBI, but I'd rather have my bedroom to myself. Yeah, sure. Sure. Totally. Totally. That's well, <laughs> why do you turn the aircon on so you can be cool? I don't want to. Die. I know he keeps I trying to get. Found a way to switch it off so it can't do anything in the night. Don't try. Don't turn it on because that's he yes. just wants you to be comfortable. I know. I know. He is really lovely. I do really like. I really <laughs> like that. And things I can say that to Sarah. Then we're not going to suddenly disappear into the sunset. No. Just no. 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 What he said about about me the other day like oh no no no, it's nothing bad you were there about I'm, I'm not going to repeat it about oh no another one of those events oh huh. yeah no. we'll just leave we'll it to talk a, about it off camera yeah yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about Carrie will find it really funny I'll tell you off camera yeah all right bring the bell oh, yes. <laughs> yeah all right well, this has been super fun and maybe we'll do another one down the road when you're in the UK or like you know, well, I want to follow up. I want a homocysteine follow up from both of you. Oh yeah. yeah. When it comes to better quantum environments, if I'm going to move somewhere, I'm going to Switzerland. I've already decided. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm still investigating places to make a nest and definitely Georgia, but I'm just not staying here in the middle of summer. No, Come it's... to Lisbon in October. Visit me. We UK people love Portugal. That's a good location. So yeah, that would be fun. I'm excited. I hear it's gorgeous. And I hear it has good, good energy associated with it. So I've been Amazing. invited to a conference. Victor is doing. Oh yeah, Water's doing a conference, and Gerald Pollock and Dr. Cruz are speaking. So they've oh, invited okay. me. Love fun, fun. I don't know when it is or where it You're is. Like yes, <laughs> yes. 
Amazing. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been lots of fun and we'll do it again soon. Bye.